Mic check. Peas and carrots, peas and carrots, parsnips. Hi, I'm Ashley Daigle, and this is Advice from the Cheerbrarian. Never heard of that word before? Well, that's because I smushed two words together because I felt like it. This week, we're going to do what we always do. Mix a dollop of advice to improve your life. Born from a few of my successes and a boatload of my mistakes with the book recommendation of the week. Unearthed by my voracious love of reading, from self-help to historical fiction and everything in between. Today, I am excited to announce we are welcoming our very first guest, Heidi Convery Liscom, a Gallup Certified Strengths Coach, as we talk about the Clifton Strengths Assessment, which measures the intensity of your talents in each of 34 themes. Why am I doing this? Well, because knowing your strengths can help you find clarity and drive when you feel stuck, like with being rejected, which is what I talked about in the previous episode, and Heidi is going to help us understand it better. If you like what you hear, and I really hope you do, pretty, pretty please, with two cherries on top, tell people about this podcast, share a link to an episode, because sharing is caring. And now, let's talk to Heidi. Okay, so excited to be here with you today. So last week on the podcast, I identified two phases of rejection, seeking comfort and forging ahead. I recommended a book for each phase and the recommended book for moving ahead was Strength Finder 2.0. But listen, it was not enough for me to just give you my take on it because this is really important to me. I get a lot of value out of it and I wanted you to learn about it too. And I wanted us to hear from an expert on how connecting with what you're good at and what you like to do can boost your ego and give you direction from bouncing back from about of badness. How's that for alliteration? Yeah. So today, drum roll, please. <laughs> That's perfect. That's great. We have our first ever guest, Heidi Convery Liscom, who is a strengths coach and is going to talk to us more about all of this and how you can use it to invest in yourself. Welcome, Heidi. Thank you. <laughs> Hailing from death. Yes, from Dallas. Beautiful. Love it. Yeah. Um, I'm so excited that you're here. Like, I'm so freaking Absolutely. pumped about this i i'm like out of breath i'm sitting in a chair <laughs> <laughs> let me just let that's me just what say. happens when really cool things happen you just you know your body reacts you get pumped um so like i need to know heidi on a scale of 10 to 11 how excited <laughs> are you to be on this podcast today <laughs> um so i am a i'm a morning person great just by nature more pumped in the morning can't do jack past 3 p.m. Okay, sure. I'm just not an evening, afternoon person. Um, mm -hmm. My like 11 and a half to 12 showed mm -hmm. when I couldn't fall asleep last night. And that's my jam. Falling asleep is my jam. So wow. I was super pumped about this morning. I feel honored and somehow more excited. I'm just concerned. If I, if I pass <laughs> out. Keep breathing. Keep <laughs> Just, just have your phone nearby in case you need to call the local authorities to help me. <laughs> uh, I'm in Illinois. Hi, my uh, like... podcast host has passed out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's get into it. Being a strength coach, mm -hmm. what what is that about? Like how, who, what, where? Right. Tell us. It's funny. Uh, when people ask what I do, I've actually stopped saying I'm a strength coach because people first assume physical strength. And then they take a gander and they're like, <laughs> you sure? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh, goodness. Oh, oh. <laughs> um, so I typically will say that I'm a workplace motivation coach because oh. that tends to be what I do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so I was a university administrator for about 12 years. Loved it. Thought my time was kind of coming to a close and wanted to end on a great note. Um, and throughout my whole hired career, I used um who was formerly called strengths finder now they call it clifton strengths gallops assessment um to better understand the folks that i was working with people that i managed um and just kind of i uh, use it to better motivate help people feel more productive and when i knew my time in higher ed was done um i just i just knew deep down i wanted to do something with the clifton strengths assessment because we just i feel like we need 
more of this mindset that there are things we do well. Yes. And it's worth focusing on what we do well. Manage the yes. things that we don't. I'm not saying mm-hmm. turn around like, Wah. I don't do that well, so sorry. Right. But just we we're such a weakness fixing society and we focus so mm. much on the areas mm. that we don't do well that um I feel like maybe this is something I could bring to larger audiences um in the corporate sector or the small to mid-sized business sector. So that's what I did. I went and got my certification through Gallup um to coach the Clifton Strengths Assessment, opened up my coaching practice eight years ago now, which is crazy. Wow. That's and, exciting. Yeah. And now I work with um, businesses in Dallas, but also outside of Dallas, um, and go in and help roll out the Clifton Strengths Assessment for an organization and do one-on-one coaching with employees, lunch and learn, small group sessions, full company workshops, keynotes at conferences, um, with the mindset to help people understand you do things well, let's figure out how you can create more opportunities to bring your strengths to work. Wonderful. That yeah. is excellent. And so you've talked about this a little bit just now, but specifically in the intro to my podcast, I say that I'm going to give people stuff to improve your life. And so <laughs> I need to know specifically how can knowing your strengths in this assessment, how can it improve your life? Because yeah. we, we're promising that we're going to do that today. So shoot. Well, I yeah. guess I could tell you how. Then. <laughs> um, <laughs> no pressure, no pressure. Yeah, no, no. So you know, self-awareness is a funny thing. Um, I think it's maybe one of the hardest journeys that we can go on mm-hmm. to kind of really take a hard look inside and recognize that actually we're responsible for how our life is going. And a lot mm. of... <laughs> Wait, me? Not, right? I, I, not, I not you. Not you. No, no. Other people. <laughs> Other people are. Yeah. And... Because it's easier, right? To be a victim. It's easier to just feel like, Mm -hmm. you know, things are happening to me. Um, But the reality is that when we start to recognize, you know, your strengths are the reason things are going really well. And also when we kind of let them get out of control, the reason things get harder for us in relationships, productivity, uh, creative thinking, right? Mm -hmm. And so once we know what those talents are, we've got a better hold on them. We can figure out and be proactive in knowing, hey, this situation coming up at work, this is probably going to irritate a couple of strengths of mine because I understand what they are. So I'm going to go into this with a different mindset now, right? I'm going to go in thinking, okay, Beverly likes to derail the meeting. Mm, That keeps me. Love a Beverly. Don't you though? Mm, mm, We all hung with a Beverly. (laughs) Now I know she's going to do it, right? Because people Mm -hmm. are consistent. So I'm going to go on going. As soon as she starts to derail the meeting, I'm going to make a tally mark on my (laughs) notes page, right? And I'm going to keep track. And now it's a game for me. And I'm a little more in control of my own emotions. And I'm changing my experience in that meeting without having to, because you can't change somebody else. So you're getting more in control of your emotions when you know your talents, your strengths, because you know what energizes you and you know what doesn't. And so there's not as much like, you know, shock value when you're going into situations that are a little bit rough. Um, right. Yeah, that that whole concept tends to really be the part that people lock into with this, I think, um, okay. is just recognizing a different level of control you can have on your own circumstances and your own environment just by digging into who you are a little bit more and understanding what motivates you and what doesn't. Gotcha. And I bet too that you, like you can also use it for a springboard for problem solving. So like if you feel stuck, you can sort of go, okay, let me look at my strengths. Be tactical, right? So you can say, okay, how could I, could I fix this with, with communication? Could I fix this with input? And like using it as a creative jumping point when you feel stuck. 100%. 100%. That's probably... 60% 60% of what I um, coach people on in one-on-one coaching sessions, mm-hmm. well, they're coming in saying, I'm having a really hard time with, we'll say procrastination, right? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, what, what is that term? Procrastination? <laughs> and, and if you I'm heard, unfamiliar. <laughs> I, I didn't do the script for this episode this morning. Right, no. It was weeks no. ago. Weeks ago. It's mm-hmm. super rare. 
<laughs> barely anybody deals with it. But should you? Sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Every now and then someone will come in and say, I procrastinate, I need help. Right. Right. Um, so we'll bring their strengths up and look at their top 10 and figure out where the procrastination is coming from because you can do that. I know it sounds voodoo, like there's no way that this is, it's that simple, but it actually is. Mm. Um, if, you know, you've got a big project per se that you're trying to get done mm -hmm. and you have achiever as a high strength, which okay. a lot of folks in the United States do, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it could be that you don't have enough small wins to feel the progress, right? Mm -hmm. So you're not acting on it because it seems like it's going to be this huge thing that takes a big amount of time. Mm -hmm. And thus we procrastinate because that achiever strength isn't getting any fulfillment, right? Gotcha. So then you break the big thing up into smaller things so that you've got a strength that starts to get pumped about the momentum, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I accomplished that one email today. Oh, I listed, you know, those three things I need to list today, small little wins. Right. So that's kind of, it's really endless how strengths can help you. It helps to know the mm -hmm. strengths of your partner in your relationships, that productivity piece of work. Um, and of course, having a coach to kind of help you through at least the beginning is super helpful. But mm -hmm. there's some great content online and books, which I'll talk about later, that can mm -hmm. be really helpful in kind of going that journey on your own if, you know, that's something that you need to do for a while. Awesome. Very, very cool. Um, so before we tackle rejection, which we're going to get to in a minute, I want to talk about the four themes of the assessment, especially like you live in this world. I've taken this assessment. I, the first time I took it was 2011. We're both very familiar, but a lot of people may be learning about this for the first time. So mm -hmm. there are four themes. And this is a selfish question. It's about my own results. And, you know, hopefully we'll relate <laughs> to other people. Yeah. My results, I see them as skewed. I have a ton of strengths in one category, which is relationships. And I have zero in, I think it's executing, which makes me feel like maybe my personality is broken. <laughs> I, don't think that's, I don't think that's actually probably the takeaway. So tell us about the, the themes, the four themes, yeah. and like what results like mine could mean. Yes. I'm going to start this real quick by saying something because I think this is helpful for folks. Most folks have taken a personality assessment of some kind. And you referenced mm -hmm. this in your podcast before, right? That you love them. Yes. A lot absolutely. of people do. Mm -hmm. This is how Clifton Strengths fits in with the others. Most of the other typing uh, assessments, so we'll take like Myers Briggs, True mm -hmm. Colors, DISC, you could put Colby Index in there, Enneagram, right? Mm -hmm. Those tell you essentially how you like the layout of your house. That's why you and I could have the same Myers-Briggs, but we're two different people, right? We have okay. the same thing. Essentially, that means you and I like a ranch. You like a ranch style, right? Okay. Somebody sure. else might like, uh, I'm blanking on houses. Yeah, I don't know. Colonial? Um, Colonia how was I also <laughs> going to go with Colonial? Ashley, please. Wait. Okay. Somebody else might like Colonial, right? Sure. Clifton Strengths tells you how you like to decorate your house. Okay. So that's that's why I sort of lean to Clifton Strengths. I love the other ones. I found a lot of help with them. Sometimes mm -hmm. I'll combine the two if an organization already uses one. Sure. Um, but the depth that you're going to get with Clifton Strengths is a little bit different because that's where the true change in how your brain works is visible. That's why you could have the same results. You could both be an orange. Mm -hmm. And looking at the person next to you and be like, I am not that person. And yet right. we're both orange. You just both like a ranch. But then you get into the strengths and realize the inside decorations are completely different. Got it. Okay. So um, there are 34 strengths altogether. Right. They're divided into four categories or domains. Mm -hmm. Relationship building, they're the blue. Executing, the purple. They like to get things done. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, yeah, we'll talk about it. <laughs> um, and those relationship building, those are ones that are like the people smart. They enjoy mm -hmm. um, working with others. They're fascinated by human beings. Executing like to get things down to purple. Green are strategic thinking. They are all up in the noggin. So okay. fascinated by information, love of learning, critical thinking, conceptualization of ideas. Mm -hmm. And then the fourth are influencing. Those are kind of the marigold color if you want to be booge about it. I do. I do. Uh, of course. Um, influencing are just like they sound. They like movement. They like to uh, have impact on others. 
Um, they often like to get things going, not necessarily motivated by finishing something, but definitely motivated by kind of starting the process. Right. There's no perfect combo. And it feels like there should be. And because mm -hmm. we're weakness fixing folks mm -hmm. in the US, mm -hmm. we tend to look at our results. And if we are missing one of those four domains in our top 10, we feel mm. like we are lacking. Really? People feel that. Hmm. They, they do. Oh, man. When I tell you, when I'm like, I'm kind of uh, introducing strengths for the first time in an organization. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely number one, if not number two question that I always get. Like, what does it mean that I don't have this? Right. Am I trying to get them? Should I work on it? And then take the assessment mm -hmm. again and hopefully get, no. You're like, it's not a Pokemon. It's not what it's you're really not. <laughs> 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 You don't need to catch all of the strengths. You don't have to catch them all. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm going to use that next time. It's fantastic. Good. Uh, there's, there's just no perfect combo. It doesn't mean that you're lacking anyway. Um, and we'll take you as an example, right? If you don't have mm -hmm. any executing strengths in your top 10. Right. Ashley, you wouldn't have a podcast mm. if you weren't able to get things done. True. So right? it means more like I I prioritize or like my my I don't get my jollies from getting things done as much as I get from other things. Correct. Correct. Okay. So you don't get things done just for the sheer love of making a to-do list and crossing it off. Got it. Right? You get things done likely if others are involved because okay. you're relationship building. So you get more fulfillment if you have partnership mm -hmm. in that. Mm -hmm. um, fulfillment was a better word than job. <laughs> that was good. Yes. You can go back and take that out or not. <laughs> Keep it I'm in. It. It's going to be in. Yes. <laughs> I'll know that I was the I was the guest who had that word included in on her yeah. podcast. Perfect. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Uh -huh. Love it. So. There's no, there's no lacking. Um, it just tells you where your brain tends to go first mm -hmm. and what won't be a motivator for you. It doesn't mean you don't do that. You mm -hmm. do it probably in a more non-traditional way, right? Mm -hmm. Using the other strengths that you have. Okay. Um, but that in and of itself, right? Super important to know. If you're surrounded by people at work who have a lot of executing strengths, talking about you specifically, right? right. And folks are jacked about a big to-do list. Right. They're like, just I'm put me in a corner by myself and let me go. And I'm just going to work until 3 a.m. staring at my to do list, on my computer. And you see the you see my face pump. when you just said I put see me your face. in a corner by myself. I just went mm, gross. But here's the thing. Like. If anybody gets anything from. Taking the Clifton Strengths assessment and going through your strengths, I hope it's validation that you're, there are things that are right with you, right? And we're, we compare ourselves so much to other people. And in that situation, you could look at everybody getting super motivated and getting stuff done by themselves in the corner and go, what's wrong with me that I don't like that, right? What's wrong with me that I, that's really hard for me to do. But there's nothing wrong with you, right? It is a, it's understanding that I'm not motivated that same way. And I do need to sit at a table with others to be motivated to get things done because I get energy from them in that way. Right. So it's a, I think this assessment's here to help you feel like there's something great that you have to contribute to the world. And just because it's different from somebody else doesn't mean it's wrong. That's beautiful. I'm so excited to be talking about this with you today. I really am. Me too. Me um, too. So we've now clarified kind of general about what the assessment is and how to interpret themes and that your personality is not broken no matter what. Um, mm -hmm. So now I want to get back into the conversation about rejection. So in summary of last week, uh, I got laid off. Yeah, it was, a, it was a bummer. Didn't love it. <laughs> yeah, did not enjoy. Um, but I learned stuff, which was good. Mm -hmm. And so the lessons I talked about, so my first lesson, lesson one, getting rejected, was feel the feels and lean on your people, which is no surprise that I think that's a lesson because my relationship of my relationship mm -hmm. theme, right, is on fire for this assessment. That's, that's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. And then lesson two, and we're going to spend some time talking about this, is that there are no rules when you are, are rejected and that everyone processes rejection differently. So Heidi, I know that resonated with you. Tell us more yes. about it. It resonated because, again, 
we will often get in our brains and get lost in there thinking I'm adjusting the same way this other person adjusted and I still feel awful. And that person seems like they bounced back and they're doing great. What's wrong? Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you were talking in your podcast about how um, you reached out to your friends, you got on the phone and you went and got in the hammock and had an adult beverage and mm -hmm. were just hitting all the friends up. Right. And yeah. just needed to talk it out. And that resonated with me because I know your strengths <laughs> um, and communication is high for you. Positivity yep. is high for you. Mm -hmm. Woo is high for you. Stands for winning others over. You mentioned mm -hmm. that earlier. Yep. Um, those strengths feed off of being with others. Communication right. wants to talk it out, right? Positivity and woo want to get a boost from a connection with those around them. Mm -hmm. So for you, that was the perfect way to enter recovery, right? right? Because you were feeding those strengths. You were providing opportunities for them to be used in a time that was really difficult. Mm -hmm. If somebody has communication, wound positivity very low, yep. we'll say 34, 33, 32, right? Bottom of the barrel. Mm -hmm. That might not be the best course of action for them in recovery, sure. right? Yeah. They could, but maybe they have, I don't know, learner, right? As a high strength. So maybe right. they need to go do something new. Maybe they need to take a pottery class that day. Maybe they mm. need to watch a documentary. If they have input high, right? Like right. you're, we feel the best as humans when we're feeding our unique set of strengths. Mm -hmm. And that includes when we're going through really difficult life situations. And right. I, so again, kind of talking about the question you had before about why is it important to mm -hmm. know your strengths and how does that improve your quality of life? This is a perfect example of what you went through, right? And your quality of life during a really difficult time was fed well, right? It went as well mm -hmm. as it probably could during that moment because you were paying attention to your own personal needs and what your strengths need to feel used. So I right. think... That's just a good lesson for folks. Like if you, you know, knowing your strengths, even if you take the assessment and you're like, all I know is when I'm reading off of the page, mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't really have somebody to kind of walk me through. That's okay. You will still guaranteed you go through your report and read. You'll still be able to glean pieces about your strengths that really will help you process through some of those difficult times and focus rebuilding yourself in a way that is going to actually make difference for you yeah different from somebody else right because you know that whole lesson was about processing differently so i gave advice based on what worked for me but the real advice was to do it your own way number one was do it my way <laughs> number two sure. was like but also <laughs> but if it ignore work. That. yeah do something else yeah some people yeah. would have been like i would like a drink i would like a hammock and i have thrown my phone into a lake and i don't want anyone um, 100% yeah, I get that. Which is okay, right? I mean, it's mm -hmm. to a point we don't want to indulge our strengths so much that we're not dealing with the hard stuff sometimes. That can mm -hmm. also happen. Um, right. When you're looking at your full assessment, it's easy to look at those bottom five strengths and mm -hmm. feel like those are your weaknesses. They tend to not be actually. Those tend to be more of your blind spots. Oh, what? Well, wait, what's the difference between weakness versus a blind spot? Right. Right. Blind spot would be something that you're just not aware of. Okay. Right. So let's say it just is not, it doesn't come to your mind. I see a lot of people who have the strength of empathy really low. Oh, it's a great conversation. Um, <laughs> and there's always this, like, am I a sociopath? Is it like you, you come to a workplace and they're like, we're having workplace conflict. And you look at the assessments and like everyone's empathy is like in the, in the <laughs> toilet. And yeah. you're like, mm, interesting. I have some thoughts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So empathy is a low strength means that you do care about the, the emotional state of others, right? Mm -hmm. Unless you're a sociopath. Mm -hmm. but most people sure. aren't. Right. So you do care. Okay. But someone's likely going to have to tell you that they don't feel great today for you to know because low you're not even going to be like, you're not seeing it. Right. It's a blind okay. spot. That doesn't right. necessarily hardcore work against you. It's just, you're not aware. Mm -hmm. Our weaknesses 
tend to be when our top 10 strengths, uh, we let them go nuts. Think of like a drum solo at a concert that's gone on too long. Okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? You've been to yeah. a concert. One of the instruments decides to go nuts and just take their mm -hmm. own minute. And the first little bit, you're like, this is sweet. And then yeah. they keep going and you're like, mm. mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah, this this resonates. This resonates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So every strength has kind of these low basement levels, I'd say, where we just let them get a little bit out of control. Um, drum solo. Yeah. And we have to figure sure. out how to kind of rein them in. I'm very interested in this. So like taking, for example, one of my high ones is positivity. Mm -hmm. So like when that gets out of control, is that like toxic positivity or like it not? Is. is the opposite? Is there something like analytical at the bottom that would be kind of the counterpoint to that? Well, the strengths aren't, that's a great question. There's no mm -hmm. true opposites in the 34. Some of them are close, okay, but not quite. Um, mm -hmm. Positivity in the basement. Have you seen that meme where the dog is sitting at the table with a cup of coffee and the room's on fire? I have seen it and used it as an emoji hundreds of thousands of times in the workplace. And the dog says, everything's fine. Yeah. everything's fine? This everything's is, this fine. This is fine. This is fine. Yeah. It's my most favorite representation of positivity in the basement. Oh, yeah. So like not acknowledging the reality around you. Like right. po Pollyanna rose-colored glasses sort of 100%, situation. 100%. 100%. Okay. Sometimes it's not fine. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have to sit in it. Right. Recognize this is not good. And there's a time and a place for that positivity strength to shine through. That is the most hopeful strength. It gets over obstacles faster than most people. Mm -hmm. I adore it. I have it in my top 10 also. Yeah. Um, but we do, when we have that strength pad, we have to watch that one a little bit to make sure that we're not getting ourselves into a place of everything's fine. Everything's fine. Sure. And maybe well, it's not. Yeah. I mean, getting laid off, right? If I had, if I had turned too much into that, it would have just been like, okay, on Monday, like, what am I going to do? And I would have maybe pushed through when I still needed that comfort to yes. try to do action before I was ready for it. And then you make sort of knee jerk decisions. You maybe yes. look for a job and end up in a job that isn't what you want, but it's the opposite of what you had because yes. you just sort of emotionally jumped. Right. That's why your first suggestion on that last podcast of feeling the feels was so great. That's a great mm -hmm. example of really uh, healthy positivity, positivity in the balcony, we'll say, because it yep. is recognizing like, I know I'll get over this. Mm -hmm. I know I'll move forward. That's the healthy positivity saying it will get better. Right. But it's not great right now. So I need to sit in it for a bit and figure out how to feed some of those other strengths of myself to get into a good place before we ignite that positivity and let us take it to the next step. I love ignite that positivity. Mm -hmm. That's just good phrasing. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So then we talked about one. We talked about two. Lesson three, just as a little recap, was there is no timeline for getting over rejection. And then I talked about the phases and how, like, it's not perfectly linear. You might get comfort. You might try to move forward. You might say, forget this noise. I'm going to get back into my pajamas, pull the shades, and turn on the new season of The Challenge Show on Paramount Plus, which I love. Nice. Do you know the show? The I Challenge? don't. That's, that's a whole other podcast. I can't even get it to right now. So, um, <laughs> anywho, back on topic. So, if after our conversation, people are fired up about this, yeah. And they take the assessment, Yes. which let's actually, I'm going to take a second. If you want to take the assessment, I know that I plugged this in the previous episode. It is the price has gone up. I was like, oh, it's $16. That was when I took it like 10 years ago. Yeah. $24.99. You go to the website. You can either do digital, get the digital book and mm -hmm. it comes with a code. You can get a physical book and it comes with a code. You can just do the code. It's all $24.99. Correct. For, for the basic. For the top five. For the top five. The top five. Yeah. And then you pay, I think it's what, $59.99 mm -hmm. is like to give you all 34 just to kind of see where you're at. Um, so I've taken it. I've spent my monies. And it takes, how long to take it, would you say? I would give yourself about 45 minutes of uninterrupted okay. time. Um, okay. It's the questions are timed. It goes off. It's trying to get to your gut reaction. So sure. um and if you time out on questions or you answer neutral to too many, it'll add questions to the end of the assessment to help you. Oh. Yeah. So sometimes mm -hmm. it'll take 45 minutes. Sometimes it may take a little bit longer if you're kind of having an indecisive day. Okay. Um, I recommend honestly getting a book. Okay. With the code in it. Um, because I think 
there's so many great books and that, that would be an extra like physical resource for you. Mm -hmm. Then once you plug the code in and take the assessment, you'll also mm -hmm. then have access to all of your online resources as well. So it's right. It makes sense to me. And the book gives you like the book goes through all the details of every single strength, right? It's yes. like has a little chapter or a little section on each strength and tells you what it means and what it looks like, which I think is helpful. Just, you know, maybe, maybe you want to talk to me oh, about helpful. mine and now you can read about them and like, wouldn't so that be cool? Helpful. So cool. Helpful. Okay. So in conclusion, if people have taken the assessment, they got their stuff, they're looking for what's next. Like what is an action item you would suggest? I love homework. So I'm trying to find homework for other people to do where to begin. My first um, suggestion for mm -hmm. most people that I coach is once they've taken the assessment, they have their results, send your results to five closest people to you. Oh, okay. I would combine that. If you've got a bestie at work, I would do a work person. If you've mm -hmm. got like, someone you trust there, a um, couple of friends, a couple of family members, because they all know you in different ways. Right. And ask them for their feedback after they've read through your results, which of these strengths do you see the most in me? Um, mm -hmm. Which of these do you think that I lean on the most or that I contribute the most or which of these have been difficult for you to deal with sometimes? <laughs> right? I'm on my drum solo. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to ask anybody. I know you don't. <laughs> But you know what? One of my top five is input, which means secretly hey. I actually 100% want, want to do that because yeah. I want the inputs. That's fair. Well, hey, um, growth hurts. If it doesn't mm. hurt, we're probably not growing. That's true. I right? love this because we came up with homework. So send it to five people you know close yep. and like one work bestie. I yeah. love this because it's homework that's easy for you, listener, to accomplish. You just send it. But the yeah. real work, they have to do. So you can check I that mean, off I'm your to-do list. Yeah, give yourself a little pat and just wait for that sweet, sweet input to roll in. Hopefully. Um, beautiful. So now, Heidi, I think you have a surprise to share for one lucky listener. What is I that do. surprise? Tell us more. I thought that if... We are educating folks on the Clifton Strengths Assessment, getting people mm -hmm. really jacked about it so much so that they're like, I'm taking this, I'm going to get online and get it because yep. I want to know more about who I am and get pumped about that. Mm -hmm. um, it's only fair for me to offer a 45 minute coaching session on me what? to somebody who's listening to help you go through your results. I'll explain in a ton of detail what your particular strengths mean. Mm -hmm. And that gives us enough time also to kind of tackle a problem for you. So if you come into it and you say like, hey, I'd like to chat a bit about time management for myself. I'd like to chat a bit about stress management or I can't say no or whatever. Um, then I can kind of help you figure out a couple of ways you can use your strengths to kind of get over some of those humps. That is amazing. Thank you so much for doing that. Yeah. You're the best. So listeners, here's what I want you to do. If you, let me just not say if, when you were excited <laughs> in trying to win this opportunity, win-win, that was fun. Um, yeah. You're going to go to either my Insta, which is at Cheerbrarian, or my Facebook, which is the Cheerbrarian, because it is. And you're going to find the post where I talk about the episode. It's going to have my little yellow chair icon and a little quote of something that Heidi or I said. And you will comment the word me exclamation point because you're excited, right? You're excited. And then I'm going to pick one. We'll do a random drawing and one person will win 45 free minutes with the fabulous Heidi. I love it. Beautiful. Okay. So I think we're wrapping up. The strengths portion, but listen, this is a podcast that we also talk about books. So we're not getting out of here without some unrequired reading today. But I am going to make Heidi do all the heavy lifting because she is our special guest. And I want her to have the opportunity to share some books because it's fun. It's fun telling people what to read and then they read it and they tell you that they liked it and then you get so excited. So, Heidi, I think you have a few to talk about. First one, mm -hmm is actually related to today's topic. So if people are wanting to dive in more, what book should they pick up? Okay. Um, there are several 
mm -hmm. books about Clifton Strengths, Strengths Finder out there. Um, you really, you can't go wrong. My favorite mm -hmm. is called Now Discover Your Strengths. Okay. Also comes with a code. Um, I call it the OG because it's one of the first books that came out. Um, I love it because it has sections that talk about each of the strengths. And then in the back, it has sections that talk about how to manage a person strong in positivity, mm. how to manage a person strong in. And you don't have to be a manager to love that section. I think it tells you mm -hmm generally than how to work with somebody who has that right. particular strength that's different than yours. And I just, I, I mean, you can even, I, this book has been through some stuff. I've got more tabs than there are actual pages. I think. Yeah. I don't know if we'll, I'm, sometimes I share clips with video. Let me see all those tabs. There's a whole lot of tab. tabs. The whole, oh my goodness. There's a lot. I mean, of it's like, there. it's the best. Got it. Okay. So yeah, then if people, you said this comes with a code so they can either get the Clifton Strengths 2.0 book that has a code that has yes. goodies. So yes. you would say get one or the other of the, you wouldn't need. Yeah. It. Don't get both. both. There's no okay. point. So no. you could take a look. I'll put the links. You could figure out which one appeals to you. Yes. Okay. Awesome. And then I think you have another book that is very dear to your heart to share with mm -hmm. our listeners today. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so okay. I, of course, coach for a living. Yep. Um, several years ago, um, went through kind of a tough life situation and ended up developing, I have two kiddos, they're nine and 11. Um, and we ended up developing a really unique communication model, which sounds super formal, but um, for ourselves, when we were kind of uh, going through life transition together, mm -hmm. um, where we would sit on the floor of the closet and that became our place where myself and my kids could really be vulnerable about what we were feeling and talk about it together. And there wasn't judgment in there. Um, there wasn't punishment in there. There wasn't, it was just a space to connect and be real with one another. That's great. And I wrote a book about it. Yeah, you did. So if you have kids mm -hmm. um, who probably are like under high school, ideally young or 12, 12 and under, like 12 and under is probably more appropriate. Okay. I talk a little bit in the book at the end about maybe introducing this concept to like middle school, high school, but generally 12 and under is more helpful. Okay. Um, it's called the closet check-in. Mm -hmm. It's on Amazon. Love it. Um, and it's short. You could read it in an hour, but I talk about, how we started closet check-ins in our house um, and then how you could potentially start it and just some lessons learned throughout kind of how we framed it and how it's morphed over time as the kids have gotten older. Um, but so closet check-in and if you have younger kiddos uh, wrote a kid's book about it. Two books. She wrote two wow. books y'all. Let's just hold on. We're going to, I'm just going to snaps. We're going to brag on that. Cause you know, I love a brag. Heidi, fabulous two book writer, get out of here. So it's crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, Maisel in the magical closet cute. named because my kids are Mac and Hazel. So we combined and made Maisel. <laughs> That's too cute. <laughs> uh, but Maisel has a rough day at school and mm. she and her mom have a closet check-in when she gets home mm -hmm. um, to talk about it. And so it's a great way to introduce the concept of closet check-ins with your kids. Yeah. If you feel like it's weird saying, Hey, let's go sit on the closet floor or <laughs> Wherever. With no context, follow With me no context. to our to our pantry. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. So mm -hmm. this just and at the end of the book, Maisel encourages kids like, hey, maybe your special spot isn't in the closet. Maybe it's behind the couch, or maybe it's because everyone's it. different, right? You might not have sure. that spot. Um, and she challenges kids to go find a spot in the house that feels like it could be a really safe place, you know, for your family. So I love that. Um, yeah, on Amazon too. Awesome. 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 And again, I will share links to all these and we have one more book. Now this is just, I, I told her like, she loves to read too. And I was like, give us something fun. Give us a book that you are excited to tell us to read. So what mm -hmm. do you have for us, ma'am? So I chose wellness by Nathan Hill. Oh. If you have read the Knicks, that mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. same author. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is a chunk this is a doozy. Okay. That's a chonker. So How long? Like, what's, what's the page number on that bad boy? Page number is... Bad book? I don't need to gender the book. It's a bad book. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, yeah. okay. Who knew it was going to take me? So like almost mm -hmm. 600. 
Whoa. Okay. So it's a commitment. That's it's fine. It's a dog. It's a dog. Um, I, this book is about a couple. Mm -hmm. They have a kid and they're in the late thirties, early forties stage of life where, and Heard I don't know if this is maybe mm. relatable to folks out there, but where it's just like, what am I doing? What am I doing? I'm laughing at the relatability. Like this is the conversation I have with everyone my age all of the time. We're just, you basically look around and you're like, so this is it. This is what, this is what we're doing. This, exactly. this is what we're doing. This is what, what I'm doing? doing. Right. What are we doing? Am I okay. doing the parenting thing right? Probably mm. not. I don't mm. know. Are my spouse and I, are we supposed to be together? It feels like we're roommates. I mm -hmm. care about them, but now I'm confused. Is this all there is? I've been doing the same job. Is this also all there is? The writing in this book, again, nothing like super gigantic happens mm -hmm. necessarily, but the writing is so on point and so relatable that you will just find yourself totally immersed in the experience of this couple and really thinking about it throughout the day as you kind of go on your own life. And it's just, it's comforting in that way, I think. So highly recommend it. Got it. And that is Wellness, a novel. Wellness. I will be reading it and I will be doing a future Itsy Bitsy book review on it. You heard Love. it here first because I'm real pumped about it. Love. Um. So I guess we're wrapping up now, which is a real oh. bummer because we could talk for, we've talked for 40 minutes. We could easily talk for 40, 400 more minutes, Let's I think. Go. That'd be a really long podcast. Like so long. <laughs> um, My some point. You know, here's an authenticity. I was like, I planned so much. I was like, I didn't think about how to to wrap this up, which is why, you know, my podcast ends with me going, okay, bye. Because like, I don't know how to end things or I do uh. too many in like I sign an email. I'm like, thank you. Let me know if you have any questions. Best wishes, warm regards, sincerely. Like I can't uh -huh. get out of there. Uh -huh. So we're going to try to wrap this up. So in okay. conclusion, best wishes. No, um, <laughs> Heidi, <laughs> Thank you so much for your time today. I knew that you were going to be a great first guest. I knew that, but like it happened. This was great. I learned I so much. I had a blast. Thank you for I'm inviting me. I mean, yeah. and I really, to be your first podcast guest, I'm mm -hmm. very honored for that. Mm -hmm. Your podcast is so, it puts so much good out into the world and is relatable and I just, I adore it. So I'm thrilled to be linked officially to Chiru. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you, Heidi. And thank you everyone for your time. And stick around because I'm going to do the little outro and give you some, you know, nuggets of wisdom to take with you. So thanks for coming. Bye-bye. See you next time. Bye. -bye. <laughs> As I just said, it is recap time because life is busy and I want you to have at least one little nugget of wisdom to take with you. So what the heck did we do today with Heidi? Well, in today's episode, Heidi and I spoke about Clifton strengths and how knowing your strengths can improve your life. And your homework, if you choose to accept it, is to take the assessment and send the results to five people in your life and ask for their feedback. You can ask, what strength do they see that you use the most? or which of your strengths have been the most difficult for them to deal with? Now that is a juicy question. In Unrequired Reading, our spectacular guest Heidi recommended not one, but four great books. For more on strengths, she suggests you check out Now Discover Your Strengths. And she also recommended her own two books, The Closet Check-In and Maisel in the Magical Closet, for parents of kiddos 12 and under looking to connect as a family. And last, but certainly not least, she recommended a juicy fiction book that she could not put down, Wellness by Nathan Hill. If you're interested in a story about a married couple in their 30s and 40s trying to muddle through, you should definitely check it out. And don't forget, Heidi is giving away a free coaching session to one lucky listener. All you need to do is go to my episode post on social media on Instagram or Facebook, the one with the yellow chair, and comment me with an exclamation point and you could win. If you like what you heard and want to support my podcast, 
Follow me on the socials, Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok, and engage there. I would love to hear from you. And if you're wondering, gosh, I wish there was a convenient place to see resource links, well, look no further than the show notes, and I will also post those things on my Facebook and Insta pages. Now go on, get out of here, do a power pose, drink more water. Okay, bye!